Our desire to explore space began with our eyes. The more we saw, the more it fired our ambitions. Soon the naked eye was not enough. At about the time Newton was pondering on gravity in England, another great mind was changing our whole way of seeing. Experimenting with lenses in his native Florence, Italian Galileo Galilei developed a powerful telescope. This instrument was coming from Holland and was sold as a toy. When Galileo took it, it began to be transformed from a toy to an instrument. He started to use the magnification power of the telescope to look at the skies. This is a major step in his career and also in the history of modern cosmology. Suddenly, planets like Jupiter and its moons 400 million miles away were at our fingertips. We saw the universe was greater than we ever imagined. Our sense of place in the cosmos changed forever as telescopes expose the universe's most amazing secrets. Now we can see almost 200 trillion times further than Galileo's first telescope, and that has made us ask new questions. We would like to know, how did the universe originate? How did we get here? How did we eventually evolve to the point that galaxies formed and stars and planets and us? It's a central question. All telescopes on Earth have to look through the veil of our atmosphere. This distorts and reduces what we can see. So we've put a telescope into space, outside our atmosphere. It's an extraterrestrial telescope. It's called Hubble. What we were trying to do is to build something that will measure the light of objects that are maybe 10, 15 billion light years away from us. They travel through most of the universe, they get to us, and they are extremely faint. That's not easy when you're flying in space, 17,000 miles per hour. You've got a 40-foot long telescope that weighs 25,000 pounds with large solar panels. And we can't touch it. We can't get out a screwdriver even. We can't change a thing. It has to be perfect. It has to run without any maintenance of any kind for years. Ten thousand engineers, astronomers, and optical experts work together to make the Hubble telescope. Its mirror, with a diameter of 7.9 feet, is one of the smoothest mirrors in the world. Once built, the Hubble telescope had to be carried into orbit. Only one spaceship could do that, the Space Shuttle. It transported Hubble 400 miles above the Earth. The shuttle got the Hubble project underway. Soon it will be needed to save it. When Hubble delivered its first images to Earth, there was a problem. The pictures were out of focus. Hubble's mirror was malfunctioning. It was somewhat like being punched in the stomach and having the, the wind knocked out of you. You're all set to go, and here was this terrible disaster. To solve the problem, scientists built a corrective mirror called CoStar. And we have liftoff. Lift off of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. The delicate operation of fitting CoStar into the orbiting Hubble was given to the Space Shuttle Endeavour and its seven-man crew. With less than an inch of clearance on either side and working like surgeons, the shuttle astronauts placed CoStar into the Hubble telescope. But would it actually work? Will that camera work? 
we'll go start work. Did we get the right prescription for those glasses to put on Hubble? The operation was successful. Three years after its launch, Hubble began to send back the most staggering images ever seen of our universe. Clouds of cosmic gas trillions of miles high, with stars growing inside them, stars being born, stars dying. We know, thanks to Hubble, that altogether, within the limits of the observable universe, there's something like 100 billion trillion stars. It's a lot of stars. And we now know, thanks to recent discoveries, very recent discoveries also, uh, what we had uh, believed but had no proof of, and that is that many of those stars have planets. So there are countless trillions of planets in the observable universe. 